bless your name, Jesus. I wish somebody so loud a catch a fire. Hallelujah. Catch a fire. Catch a fire, Jesus. I wish somebody so loud a catch a fire. Pull them with the Holy Ghost. On Sunday afternoon, Catch and Fire Ministries. We are so grateful that you're here. We ask that God would bless you, heal you, save you, comfort you, provide whatever your desire is in him. We want to especially welcome Miss Hilabonda Davis to our forum today. God bless you. Welcome. Hope you would be a blessing as you join us today. Before we go into our worship, we're just going to open in a word of prayer. Loving Father and our God, we praise you. We magnify you. We adore you. We are so grateful that we have a God like you. For you're not only God, you are our Father. And Lord, you told us, oh God, that when we come to you, we can say, Abba, Father. So Lord, we cry out, Abba, Father, to you today. We just ask, oh God, that Lord, as we join together, oh God, to worship you, to magnify you, to spread your word, that your Holy Spirit presence, oh God, which is the agent of salvation, God. Who, oh God, is you have sent into the world, oh God, to draw men to you. We ask, oh God, that that Holy Spirit anointing and presence will be all over this service. The Lord, oh God, those who are tuning in, that you would bless them. Those who will be tuning in later, God, that Lord, you will bless them. That Lord, those, especially for those who are not saved, that they will hear your word today, oh God, and give aid, heed to your word. We pray, oh God, as we worship you and magnify and exalt your holy name, that you will be a blessing to others as you will be a blessing to us. All this we ask in no other name but in your son's name and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And now we are going to take it off to our worship with Minister Denlin Black. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord for he's worthy. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this day. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to praise you. We just honor you. We magnify you, oh Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done, you've done for me. Blessings and honor and glory, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done, you've done for me. Blessings and honor and glory, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Oh, I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done you've done for me blessings and honor and glory they all belong to you blessings and honor and glory they all belong to you Blessings and honor and glory, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For blessing me, oh, thank you, Lord, oh, thank you, Lord, oh, thank you, Lord, I 
just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so good. You have been so good. Oh, I just want to thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Oh, we just want to praise. I just want to praise. I just want to praise you, Lord. I just want to praise you. Oh, lift my hands and say, I love you. You mean all the world to me. And I exalt your holy name. 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 Oh Lord. Oh I just want to praise you. Lord, we lift our hands and say, we love you. Lord, you mean all the world to me. And I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name. I exalt your holy name, O Lord. We exalt thee, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, oh, O Lord, we exalt thee. We exalt thee, we exalt thee, oh Lord. We magnify thee, we magnify thee, we magnify thee, oh Lord. We magnify thee. We magnify thee, we magnify thee, oh Lord. We praise thee, Lord, we praise thee, oh, we praise thee, oh Lord, Lord, we praise thee. We praise thee, oh, I just want to praise, we just want to praise, oh, Lord, we want to praise your name, hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Praise the Lord. We thank our sister for ushering us into that worship session, giving praise unto the Lord, to magnify the Lord, to praise him. Even when you magnify something, you make it big, and God is big already. But yet we still have to magnify his goodness in the earth because men does not recognize who God is as yet. His presence filled the whole earth. 
and it behoves us as his children to sing of his praises, to tell of his goodness, especially to tell of how he has rescued us from a life of sin. So we just bless the Lord and praise him and magnify his name. Amen. Thank you, my sister. At this time, we're going to have our scripture reading by Dr. Springett. Praise God. Scripture reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23, and it's out of the New Living Translation. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he's far above any ruler, authority, or power, or leader, or anything else. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church, and the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word, and we thank God that his word is alive and well. It's living, breathing. Praise the Lord. We continue with our worship with our minister Black. Amen. Hallelujah. Come taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Let us drink from the fountain that shall never run dry. Let us dine at the table to eat the bread of life. Lifting up holy hands to the Lord most high. Lifting up holy hands to the sky, to the sky. Oh, come everyone, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, come everyone, taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us gather together in harmony, helping to lift up each other. In unity, giving glory and honor to the Master and King, giving all glory and honor. We sing praise to the King. Oh, come, everyone, taste. And see that the Lord is good. Oh, come everyone, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Oh, come everyone, taste and see he's good. Oh, Come, everyone, taste and see he's good. Oh, come, everyone, taste and see my God is good. Oh, come, everyone, taste and see he's good. Oh. 
come everyone taste and see that the lord is good oh come everyone taste and see that the lord he is good mm -hmm. come everyone that's an invitation partake taste and see that the lord is good he said taste and see that the lord is good blessed is he that trust in him and we can only sing of what the lord has done for us to let you know you have to come and taste him you have to come and partake of the supper of the lamb by accepting him into your life amen we thank our sister for the worship song we thank for the holy spirit for bringing us thus far in our worship and at this time we come to the main course of our worship we thank god that he has placed in our midst able bodies to present the word we have our guest speaker today so without any further ado I turn this part of the service over to Dr. Springer to make our introduction. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Uh, we have with us a dear friend of mine. We go back a mighty long way. She was a sweet, wonderful spirit when we were in college together. And uh, over the years, she's only gotten sweeter as she continues to serve and follow Jesus with all of her heart. And I am privileged to present to you today. Uh, Minister Lavonda Davis, someone who is serving God with all her heart, mind, and soul, and who will certainly be giving us a word from the Lord. Minister Davis. Amen, amen, amen. Giving honor to God, my Lord and my Savior. We do have a good God, and I just, he is good. And he's worthy to be praised. And so, Father God, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, to Dr. Novella Springett, uh, Catch on Fire Ministries, to so all that are on um, our virtual service today. Um, I just thank God for you, and I thank God for this opportunity, um, Minister Dylan Black, Dylene Black, and Sister Berlin. Um, I just thank you for your presence and thank you for all of those. I give honor to my pastor, Reverend Dr. Johnny Melvin Green, who is the pastor of Mount Nebo Baptist Church, for the blessings to come before your presence and bring the word of God. It is truly an honor and privilege, and I just want to say thank you. Um, if you will, we can bow our heads and pray. Um, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Uh, Lord God, uh, use this unworthy servant, use these vessels. Holy Spirit, have your way and speak through me for your people. Uh, you know exactly what they need. You know what's on their heart. And allow your word to come forth with boldness, with clarity, and with receptiveness, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, and may you get all glory, all honor, and all praise. And may someone give their life to you, because you are good. We thank you, we honor you, and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Um, it is certainly a privilege and an honor to be here. And, um, you know, I, I just, I'm just overwhelmed and I just, I just thank God for it. So I say, Holy Spirit, I know that you will speak through me. And so I'm just going to um, hide behind the sacred cross and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through me of the words that he had placed in my spirit. Amen. Uh, you heard Pastor Dr. Novella Springett read Ephesians uh, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. And um, I just wanted to pause and go over those scriptures and uh, share with you what our topic will be for this day. And that is to see ourselves the way God sees us. You know, one of the questions I was uh, having a conversation with a spiritual friend of mine, and he asked me the question because we often study, and he said to me, um, you know, with all the studying that we're doing, he said, um, how have you put the word of God to work in your life? And I thought about it, and I was able to share some things. And so I started to think about 
believers and non-believers, Christians and non-Christians. And I ask you the question today, do you see your life any different from your life as opposed to the believer's life? Now, I know we're saved. I know that we are believers in uh, should we leave this earthly world and transition on, we should be with the Lord. We believe that with all our heart. But when you look at the world today, and when you look at yourselves, and when you look at your life, and when I look at my life, I have to ask the question, do I see myself any different than a non-believer? Because if we're really going to be witnesses for the Lord, the world is watching us. And if our light is going to shine for God's glory, that's the question that I ask. Do we see ourselves any different? When we look at sickness and disease, and when the word of God tells us one thing, and sickness occurs in our life, how do we take authority? How do we um, put the word to work? Um, and, and act as if we really are how the Lord sees us. When we look at our financial condition and our situation, even despite everything that's going on, I know COVID is happening and I'm not, I'm not, to that, I'm not blind to that, but the word of God tells us that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. How do we see ourselves? Um, do we see ourselves any different from a non-believer. And I just wanna challenge us today. Um, and I, I hope you don't mind if I read this passage again. This book, we're coming from the book of Ephesians and Paul is um, writing to, in Ephesus, this is the, um, if I will, um, it's Ephesus was one of the five major cities in Roman empire. And Paul visited Ephesus at the end of his second missionary journey. And then um, he, during his third missionary journey, he stayed in Ephesus for about three years. And just near the end of his third missionary journey, on his way back to Jerusalem, he wrote this letter. And he wrote this letter to the elders. And unlike the Corinthians, right, he didn't write this letter to the church because they were having this dysfunction. Uh, he didn't write this letter to the church because there was a disagreement. He wrote this letter to the church and he talked about the heavenly kingdom. He talked about um, the kingdom in heavenly places. That was what he was talking about. And I love what was read by Dr. Novella Springett. And I want to read this again because Paul is saying, ever since I found and heard of your strong faith, he said, um, he said, ever since I heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the love for God's people everywhere. And one thing I can say about Catch on Fire Ministries and the members of Catch on Fire Ministries, I feel nothing but love. And I know they've given nothing but love. And ever since I've been in college, going to school and met Novella for the first time, all I got was love from her. And, 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 and in this book, he says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. And I pray constantly asking for, uh, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of him spiritual wisdom and insight, you know, what we learn and what we know uh, so that we can grow in his knowledge of him. When we know more about anyone, right, we can begin to respond the way we should. When we know more about anyone, and this is our God we're talking about, the one that spoke, made something out of nothing. This is what Paul has prayed for the saints in Ephesus, and that prayer still stands for today. He says that we may grow in the knowledge of God. And then he says, I pray that our hearts will be flooded with light, be flooded with light, so that you can understand the confident hope he has given 
to those he called his holy people who are rich and glorious inheritance. His glorious uh, people, his, his holy people, that's you and that is I. This is the prayer that he said, I constantly prayed. And then he said, I also pray that you will understand um, the, the incredible, incredible greatness of God's power um, for us who believe in him, that we will understand his greatness of God's power. This is the same power, by the way, that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor and God's right hand in the heavenly realms. This is the power that, that raised Jesus. Remember our Lord and Savior, the one that died on the cross for our sins? This same power calls prayers the greatness of God's power for those who believe. And we will understand that, that this same power that raised our Lord and Savior from the dead when he died for our sins because of we didn't get what we deserve. But we deserved a whole lot worse than what we got. But because of his love that he had for you and me, he says that, my prayer is that we will understand the greatness of this power. And guess what? This great power we have. This great power we have. And I just want to take a moment here. Um, and I'm, I'm going to finish reading. Uh, raise Jesus Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to ask Reverend uh, uh, Pastor Novella Springer. Dr. Novella Springer to read Philippians uh, chapter 2, verses 5 to 11, and then we're going to come back to Ephesians. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven, on an earth, and under the earth. And every tongue declared that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. Above every name, above COVID-19, above cancer, above every name. And what I like about the scripture here, um, and, and I'll just reference Romans 8, it talks about, the word of God talks about that we are joint heirs with Christ. Um, we are one, and, and 1 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us that we are a new creation um, in Christ Jesus. Behold, we are no longer who we are. And I want to pause here a moment because I really want us to begin to see ourselves as who we are. Because if we can see ourselves as who we are and how God sees us, we can begin to exercise the power and the authority that he has given us here on earth. I don't know about you, God has been good to me. He has blessed me. And I have walked into some of the authority and received the blessings of God. And the truth of the matter is there are still some things going on in my life. There are some family members. There are some loved ones. You know, I can talk the word of God to the stranger whom I don't know. And I have my brothers and sisters that I'm praying for. And things are happening around me. I know. And I'm like, Lord, get this strategy. This power with this authority. This life into my family. So that they can be saved, so that they can be delivered the way God has delivered you and I. I don't know about you, but I want to be able to walk in that authority across the board and be able to walk into the victory that I have in Christ Jesus. And so what I challenge us today is to understand who we are. Take the revelation of the word. Yes, Jesus is good. Yes, he died for our sins and our transgressions. He stretches. And I look at the word of God, I know the scriptures, but I say to myself, how can I make the scripture live as Hebrews 4 and 12 tells me each time I read it? And so Paul is praying for us today. And I'm praying for us today that we have knowledge of his word so that we can activate faithful word, so that we can put the word to work. Because the Bible tells us that faith without works is dead. I want to pause here a moment and just break 
out who we are. And perhaps if I can go back to the beginning of scripture in Genesis, in the beginning of time, where he says in Genesis 1:28, God created man in his own image. He said, let us make man in our own image. And remember in the beginning of Genesis when he said, it was, he said, let there be light and there was light. And when he spoke light into darkness, it became light. God made us one. He united us. We were one with him in the very beginning, but because of the sin of Adam, we were separated. But because of his work on the cross, Jesus Christ, united with him again. And so because we became united with him again, we became one spirit. We are made up of spirit. We are made up of a mind, a soul. And we are made up of a body. When we become one with God, our spirit is automatically saved. We are not ourselves. And I just want to pause here because if we can understand who we are in the spirit, we will be able to see us the way God sees us. What does that mean? So in this text, Paul is praying for revelation knowledge. And sometimes it's really important for uh, me, to, I take a step back and I say, Lord, how do you see me? Well, I'll tell you how God sees me. He sees me the way he tells me in his word. Everything that the Lord has to say about me is true. I don't care what anything else, situations or circumstances. So let me just pause here. The word of God in Genesis 126 says, let us make man in his own image. Let us make man in his own image. Praise the Lord for Reverend Baker. Let us make man in his own image. We are made in God's image. We are a spirit being. And so because we are a spirit being, we do have a mind, we do have a soul, we do have a body, we have a mind that speaks to us, that tells us our thoughts. And in order for us to know who we are in Christ Jesus, in order for us to be reminded who we are in Christ Jesus, we have to see ourselves the way Jesus see ourselves. We have to see ourselves the way God sees us. And the way God sees us is through his word. In his word, in John 14 and 12, he says, greater works you will do when I go to the Father. We doing greater works. He said greater works. I don't know about you, but when you read the book, when you read John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you will see the miracles that Jesus performed. You will see that in Matthew 19, he committed, he was walking on water and he was walking on the very storm that tried that scared them. He was walking on water. He cast out demons. He opened of the blind. And Jesus said, greater works to his disciples you will do when I go to the Father. Are we doing greater works? Do we see ourselves as who we are in the flesh and the body? Do we see ourselves the way God sees us? Remember, we are a spirit being in a body. We dwell in a body. We are a spirit being, and because we have been made one with God, we are united with God, and we live in a body. So when our body gets sick, we say, well, if I can mean to speak to my body, that's why the word of God always tells us to give thanks. Have you took time to thank him for, not just waking you up in the morning, but Lord, I thank you for my eyes, I thank you for my sight, I thank you for my liver, for my heart, I'll give you the activities of my limbs. The word of God says, Oh, give thanks, for he is good and he is worthy to be praised. But saying that, because everything the scriptures have to say is how we should live our lives. We have a body and we are a spirit. So when our body gets sick, when there's things going on in our body, just like we take our car to the mechanic, because it is a car to get fixed in service, we take our bodies to the doctor. But we are a spirit. And when we hold on to that, the word of God, and when we renew our mind, as Romans 12, 2 tells us, be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind, we begin to apply the 
word of God, just read it because of what the word is saying. Be able to allow that word enlighten our hearts and we can be able to walk in the victory of the word of God. Does that make sense to anyone? Does it make sense? Remember, we are spirit beings and we are in the world and not of the world. And so we can talk about the book of Ephesians 1. Paul's prayer is that our eyes are enlightened, our heart is enlightened through the word of God. That is why it's so important for us to read the word, try to comprehend it. And I used to try to comprehend it in my own sense, like, oh, I got to give a word. I mean, how, what am I going to say? It's really not what I'm going to say. It's what the Holy Spirit is going to say to me. Because in order for me to get revelation of his word, I have to be able to sit read and allow the spirit of God that lives inside of me to speak to me. And so when I do that, hallelujah, I begin to get revelation. Those scriptures become real to me. Those scriptures become alive to me. And I can then take those scriptures and put it to work. You know, originally this topic was going to be, we got, let's get started somewhere. But I had to take a step back and say, first, we have to understand who we are in Christ Jesus. Because if we can truly understand who we are in Christ Jesus, we can then begin to move forward. Hallelujah. And apply the word and put the word to work. And so we won't have to worry about bringing someone to church. People see the great words that Jesus said that we would do in us, lifting those that word. They will see us doing those great works, and they will want to know about our Jesus. They will want to know about who is this God that you are serving. When we, when we see, um, when life is happening all around us, and financial situation. Some of us have the financial conditions, and they say, oh, I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet has already given us a Lord and Savior that finished the work on the cross. Let me just remind us that everything that God has done for us, he has already done it. He has finished the work. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, he is finished. He gave us everything that we need. We have it right here. And so a few points I want to make in the word of God. It's important us to read the word and not just memorize it right we memorize it but we meditate on that word we renew our minds because if the truth be told sometimes our thinking can go in the carnal direction when that when we look at everything happening around us it can go into a direction we don't want it to go and i'm just i'm going to find can be transparent with you I had a surprise visitor. Well, not surprised because he came home before I got here. My youngest brother. And, you know, God has blessed him. But I know there's some things going on with him. And I'm sitting here and I'm asking myself, what can I say to him? I can talk to someone and say God is good. But if I can't speak to my own brother and hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to me, I have to, Lord, give me revelation. Holy Spirit, speak to me. If, if, if I am who I am and God sees me who I who he sees me, I should be able to go and be able to speak to my own brothers and sisters of flesh and blood that is right under my own roof and demonstrate the power of God that work within us. I should be able to walk through a home and walk through an atmosphere and cast out demons the way Jesus did because that is the power and that is the authority that Jesus has given us. And so as we study the word of God, it is my prayer that our hearts get enlightened of who we are in Christ Jesus. As we meditate on the word of God, it is my prayer that we will be transformed by the renewing of our mind. When we read the word of God and the word of God says, I will never leave you or forsake you, even when it feels like everyone has left us or forsaken us, we will stand on the word of God and be able to trust him and move forward. When the word of God and the Holy Spirit speaks to us, we are one with God and I'm walking the park and I see a whole bunch of kids smoking weed and my flesh want to say take yourselves to school but the Holy Spirit reveals to me something else to say to them in love I 
should be able to do it with boldness and authority and to speak in love. What Wanda Michelle wants to say, but what the Holy Spirit speaks to me to say, because I'm trusting the word of God is being performed and it's going at work. When I'm in situations and circumstances, when my health, when the doctor gives me an unfavorable report, and God says, by your stripes, I am healed. Now, again, it doesn't say I ignore what the doctor say, because just like a car needs fixed, I take that car to the mechanic to get fixed. But when the word of God tells me, by your stripes, you are healed, I'm going to stand on that word of God. I'm going to thank God for my liver. I'm going to thank God for my heart. I'm going to thank God, hallelujah, for my womb. I'm going to thank God for the eyes. I'm going to thank God for my ears. I'm going to thank God for the activities of my lips. He said in his word, by your stripes, you are healed. Hallelujah. What am I saying here today? See yourselves the way God sees you. If we look at our lives and we ask the question, do I see myself any different than a non-believer when it comes to situations and circumstances? Is my situation or am I addressing my situation any different than a non-believer? I challenge us to take authority over our situation and circumstance. I challenge us, whatever it is that we're going through, to get into that word of God. Okay, Lord, I am not, I have a challenge right here. I want to be able to communicate with my family. I want to be able to speak the word of God. I want to be able to share light and so that they can truly see the glory of God living inside of me and really want to know who he is. I want to be able to speak to that demon that may try to get over um, my loved one that may have an addiction. I want to be able to speak with authority because that's what Jesus said. I try I, I pray that we get in the word of God. And we allow the Holy Spirit to speak with us and direct us to put the word to work. The word works when we work it. The word works when we work it. We're going to have to renew our mind in the word of God. We're going to have, he will give us revelation when we meditate on the word of God as we are renewing our mind. And when God speaks to us, it requires for us to respond. When God speaks to us, it requires for us to respond. Remember, we are a spirit being. We are just living in this body of ours. We are a spirit being and we are one with God. And God has given us the power. He has given us the authority to walk into the victory that we have already have. He has given us the power. He has given us the authority to take control authority over our lives and over our situation. Renew our minds through the word. Meditate on the word and allow the spirit of God to speak to you. Allow the spirit of God to give you revelation. Allow the spirit of God to speak to you. I know what everyone else is saying, but what is God saying about the situation? I know what the doctors say, but what does God say about the situation? And when you sit in his presence and when you hear from him, because he will speak, because he's asked us to seek him, to get in his presence. He wants a relationship with us. He didn't allow Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to die on the cross for nothing. He did it all. He gave us everything that we would need. And when we do that, there's going to be a response that he's going to require of us. And I command and I encourage you to respond. But again. It requires us to get in his word, to start seeing ourselves differently. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. It may not look normal to the natural man. As, as uh, second, 1 Corinthians 2 and 4 says, the, ma the natural man can't comprehend those things. And that's all right. But we are children of God. We are royal priesthood. We have the power and the authority to walk into the victory that God has already given us. I want to encourage us today. I don't know what situations we're going through. I don't know what 
we are faced up against, I don't even know what atmosphere, what your atmosphere. You know, nowadays, I, when I walk around the atmosphere, the Holy Spirit speak to me, I start praying over the atmosphere. And what I begin to, God showed me something that in the, a certain area, there would seem like there would always be an accident or an incident happening. And I said, wow, Lord, thank you. And he gave me the, he spoke to my spirit to just pray, just pray, pray, pray in the atmosphere. And I said, Lord, thank you. And, 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 and that may seem small, but it's not small because we don't know what demonic spirits are going on. Remember, there's a battle going on and the devil is mad as eight E double hockey sticks because he know that at some point his time is up. He, he knows that. So he's going to do whatever he can to attack us, to take us off, to distract us. But if you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you can walk into the victory. I want to share one story. Um, you know, we've had a lot of, uh, with COVID happening, with the coronavirus, and there's a lot going on. Just before uh, we went live, um, we talked about um, with COVID and the many people that have transitioned on to the Lord. Um, and, you know, uh, last year, my mom was in the hospital about five weeks in ICU. And I remember being on the phone, my brothers and I, uh, at two o'clock in the morning, and the doctors didn't think that she was going to make it. Um, and they, they said, you know, well, they were ready to give up on her. And, um, a scripture had came to me. It was um, Hebrews 10, 23, like just stay steadfast in his word, like don't waver. And, and, and so much was happening. If it Don't waver, don't waver, stand on his word. God can't lie. God's word is truth. And I began to pray. I began to give him glory. I began to do what the spirit, the Holy Spirit said to me, trust me, just give me glory. And I want to, I cry. I just, I cried. I felt guilty. I felt bad because she came up here to see me. I was going through so much and through it all, I stood on the word of God. I stood on the word of God. I began to respond. And, 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 and I mean, the report, I remember, thank God she had a cell phone and I, she would call and be able to speak one or two words and have to hang up because she had to get her oxygen and her breath. Stayed on the word of God. God said, trust me, pray. Don't worry about pray. Stand for him. Glorify me. I'm, I don't think I ever worshiped the way I worshiped during that period. I don't think I ever worshiped. And I, and, and I look back now and I said, where was I in giving him glory and praising and standing on his word? And God began to speak to me. He said, now you got to get this house together. You got to get this house sanitized because your mother's coming home. Over period, glory to God, my mother came home. And I say this because I could have given up. I could have given up because of everything that was happening around. Don't give up on God because he hasn't given up on us. We have power and we have authority and God sees us differently the way then we see ourselves. Let's start right now. We have to start somewhere. And I encourage us today that when we read the word of God, when we get in his presence, that our hearts will be enlightened with truth. Our hearts will be enlightened with the word of God. We will get revelation and we will hear him as our minds are renewed. Hallelujah. As we get revelation, we will be able to respond to the word of God and watch God work. I pray that you all will bless. It's so good to see you, Reverend Sandra Baker, our executive pastor. God bless you. Thank you so much again, Dr. Novella Springett, for the opportunity to bring God's word. God loves us. He's a good God. At every opportunity we get a chance to praise him, I want to encourage you to praise him because he is good and he is worthy to be praised. That is God's word for God's people. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. We thank God and the Holy Spirit for using his servant, Minister LaVonda Davis, to bring forth the word. And as I was listening, I recognized that she was speaking to the members of the body of Christ. Those of us who have already known him, 
Do we see ourselves as God sees us? Do we really know what God sees us? And as she was going through, only two scriptures came to my mind. Joel chapter two say, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So God is no more, no, not talking to the, the body man. He's talking to the spirit man. And then he says that when Jesus Christ, after he rose from the dead and he was going back, he said, behold, I have given you power. Power. The same power that raised me from the dead, I have dispensed that power in you. And that is how God sees us. He doesn't see us as fleshly people. That's why Paul said, make no provision for the flesh. <laughs> so we really need to take the word of God seriously and apply it to our lives in every situation, every circumstance. And even though she has encouraged the body of Christ today, to see ourselves as God sees us and allow God to see us how he wants to see us, how he desired that we should be. I want to extend this invitation to those of you who do not know Christ, who are still out there living in sin and thinking that nobody cares. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Nobody understands. Jesus still understands. And his arms are still open to receive you. He said, come unto me, all ye who are labored and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Your load is heavy on your back, your mind, your spirit. But you can come to the foot of the cross and lay it down and ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart so that you can live the life that he wants for you, that he can see you as he sees us today, that you too can name, can become one of his children. So we thank God for our sister, minister, for using, for using the word of God to encourage us and expect the invitation to those who are not saved. Let us pray. Heavenly Father and God, we praise you. We magnify you. We adore you. We thank you, God, for your word that has gone forth. We pray, dear God, for those of us, O oh God, who have heard your word, O oh God. I'm sure there are those, O oh God, who, even though they have been born in you, Lord, they have not looked at your word as you have looked at your word in their lives. I pray today, O oh God, that as they hear your word, O oh God, that Lord, they, they would say, I will look again and recognize, O oh God, the power that they have within them, the one who lives on the inside of them, the Holy Spirit. As Jesus said, the, when the Holy Spirit is come, he will teach you and guide you all things in all things. I pray, dear God, today, O oh God, that, Lord, we will not see ourselves, O oh God, as destitute, as broken, as desolate, O oh God, cast aside, O oh God. But, Lord, we will see ourselves, O oh God, as strong people, as Paul said, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. Let us be rise up and be strong people for you, Father God. I pray, dear Father, O oh God, for those, O oh God, who have not known you, who have heard this word today, O oh God, that they would recognize, O oh God, that they are on the outside looking in, O oh God, and Lord, that the door is open for them to come in, that they will come in, O oh God, to the sheltering fold of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit, O oh God, who live on the inside of us, who is the agent of salvation, Father, that this Holy Spirit and his anointing, O oh God, would draw them to you, O oh God, that today, O oh God, they would have a new birth in you, O oh God, and recognize, O oh God, that, Lord, you love them from everlasting to everlasting, God, even before the foundation of the earth. So, Father, I pray, O oh God, that your word, O oh God, will minister to our hearts, O oh God, those of us who are saved and those who are not saved, and that, O oh Lord, all the glory and all the honor and all the praise go to you and to your Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. At this time, our sister will sing us a song. Yes, the Black. Lord. Thank you, uh, Minister Davis, for that awesome word. And to Reverend Baker, hello again. Hello. If you want to say anything, if you want to say a word, Reverend Baker, you're free. Bless you, Pastor. It is my honor to be in fellowship with this great body of Christ. Uh, we've been blessed through the word. Thank you so much, Minister Davis, for the insight. And it's only God's leading because I had not had an opportunity to speak back with Minister Davis, but I know she spoke to me earlier in the week about this assignment. And then something just led me to look at my emails and there was the link i said thank you jesus and i came in just on time so thank you for um allowing god to speak through you and you know one of the things that um 
has been happening in our in our study has been dealing with us seeing who God sees us to be. That is so powerful because when we know without a doubt that he has called us into a life that's full of abundance and powerful. So I thank you, uh, Minister Davis, for that word. May God's uh, favor be upon your life and that he will continue to give you opportunities to share his word. Thank you so much, Pastor, for this opportunity. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Help me to see me the way that you see me. Sometimes I see pain, Lord, when you see victory. I see where I am, Lord. You see where I shall be. Open my eyes. Help me believe I am what you see. Oh, help me to see me the way that you see me. Sometimes I see pain, Lord, when you see victory. I see where I am, Lord. You see where I shall be. Open my eyes. Help me believe I am what you see. You see me victorious, you see me faithful, you see me believing that you are able, you see me rejoicing, cause I have survived, open my eyes, help me believe I am what you see. Oh, 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 I am healed. I am free. I am what you see. I am what you see. I am healed. Been set free. I am what you see. I am what you see. I am healed. Oh, thank God I am free. I am what you see. I am what you see. You see me victorious. You see me faithful. You see me believing that you are able. You see me rejoicing, cause I have survived. Open my eyes, help me believe I am what you see. Open my eyes, help me believe. I am what you see. Oh, Lord, open my eyes. Help me believe. I am what you see. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Help us to see, Lord, what you see in me. As David says, Lord, thou hast been my dwelling place and from everlasting to everlasting, even before the foundation of the earth was formed, you are God and you are still God and will be forever God. And that God is a loving father, a loving provider, a loving protector, but most of all, he's a loving savior and redeemer. Amen, we thank God for him today. We give him glory, honor and praise. Thank you, my sister. At this time, we're going to have a closing session with our notices and benediction by Minister Springett. Praise the Lord. I've been so blessed. I really want to say thank you 
to Lavonda for honoring the requests and on short notice and coming. I was so blessed. I was so touched. The sincerity, the anointing was phenomenal. And as always, I am honored to worship with Bernalyn and Denlin. We go back, you know. I'm so grateful, Minister Baker, that you would join us, honor us with your presence. And I just want to give God the glory and praise because I'm so full. And as we go into the week, I know that God has given us encouragement. Help us to see ourselves as God sees us, you know. And which report will you believe? We want to believe the report of the Lord, as Minister Davis says. We're not going to listen to what the doctor says, what the lawyer says. We listen to what. God says in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Uh, we want to do more, so we have been asking for donations. If you're led, because the Lord love it, a cheerful giver, feel free to donate. We would like a physical presence. We are t currently only online, so if the Lord leads, please donate. And let's go into the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Have a blessed week. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. I wish somebody so loud a catch a fire. Catch a fire. Catch a fire, Jesus. I wish somebody so loud a catch a fire. Burn them with the coal.